My guest was groomed from age 13 to be a high-ranking New Age leader. His assignment? To usher in New Age practices into the West. He saw Christians as the least evolved on the planet. Then Jesus turned his world upside down. Next. I'm here with Alan Strugler, and he was raised, it's hard for me to believe this, but it happens to lots of people today with no religion. But at age 11, he had a vision, his very first supernatural experience. Remember, he's coming from no knowledge of religion. What was that vision? Well, as you said, I was 11 years old, and in the vision is I, I actually saw the future of my life. I actually um, saw myself almost in reality, a 40, 50-year-old, um, ministering to people in a suit and doing stuff and teaching and doing that. And um, the interesting thing was that uh, when I, uh, and that vision was almost like where I was unconscious, and then all of a sudden I was conscious again, and my first thought was, what am I doing back in my 11-year-old body? What am I doing back there? It was like, have I gone back in time? Or uh, I had no grid to it. And for like three or four days, I was totally disorientated. Didn't even know what it was. I knew it was supernatural, but I didn't know what it was. Now, your father, I understand, was a successful businessman. Yes, he was. And your stepmother loved gurus and the new age. Uh, at what age did you start having the top gurus in the world fly into your city and teach you and your stepmom in your living room? You know, I was 13. I was very young. But because I'd had that other experience, I, as they started to bring these gurus in and these new age leaders teaching, I'd get to sit there in the lounge room, looking at them, taught, listening to them, uh, being around them, and they would teach me everything spiritual. So I started to get a grid for that first experience. Hinduism has a culture where they believe that our soul keeps coming back to the earth to oh. relearn and through reincarnation. And so this guru thought I had been here for over 300,000 lifetimes, that I was very evolved. And that appeals to your ego. Well, it did appeal to my ego, yes, especially at 13. <laughs> very evolved. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so what happened is my parents agreed, and so did I, that I could become an initiate under this guru. So for every year, he would give me a Hindu god that he would initiate into my body, and I would spiritually evolve every, every year. So what, what's the ultimate goal that they were teaching you? Well, the ultimate goal was, I think it was twofold. One was to be spiritually advanced, mm -hmm. so that when I did die, I would go and be part of the universe or, or nirvana. And the second was that I could become so advanced in knowledge and spiritual teaching that I could affect the world and try and bring peace on the planet. Now, at age 22, he was invited to be a facilitator the secret meetings you had to prepare you, what were they? Well, some of the secret meetings I was invited into when I was a leader was, they want, number one, they wanted to know how we could develop strategies to affect the Christians to come over to our belief system. That was number one. And the second was to infiltrate the, um, the world through all sorts of spheres of life so that they could get their principles across the planet and ultimately have a new world order and a new world religion. And this was how many years ago were they teaching you this? This is 25 to 30 years ago. Did they have a goal? The goal was that within 30 years, and they believed this, my guru did, that within 30 years you could change a culture. And so their belief was that within 30 years of applying these strategies, there would come a time in the world that there would be ready for a new world order or a new reset or a, uh, that Christians would have to evolve into more new age belief systems. So it's been about 30 years. Exactly. Were they successful? Yes, I think they were. I don't like saying that, but I think they were. Everywhere I look now in this season, I see Christians that are being deceived. And some of them don't even know they're being deceived. And that's what deception is. I mean, I, I was a false teacher trying to get Christians across into the new age because I thought that was what was the right thing to do. So as a facilitator, what mm -hmm. exactly did you do? 
Well, we, were, we developed training courses both in personal development and business and even in spiritual things of how to bring the Hindu beliefs into those people so that their lives could be transformed and changed. Ultimately, we thought for the better. And that, that's the operative word mm. because you saw that what you taught was good, but the fruit was bad. Uh, you saw the opposite of this love and kindness going on in the people you were teaching. What'd you do about that? <laughs> I was confused because, yeah, I saw people ending up in psych hospitals and depressed mm. and suicidal and leaving families and all sorts of things. And I'm like, but that's not my heart. I thought their life should be better. So I thought I better go and ask my guru. I better mm. go and ask him what's going on. Why is this not working? And when I did that, his answer was very simple. I didn't like it, but it was very simple. He believed that the energy, spiritual energy that we were bringing into the planet, to the people, these people were not evolved enough to obtain the energy mm. or see the energy, so that's why they were having troubles. Okay, you were a facilitator, you gave people a questionnaire so you could help them, and one day, for some reason, you decide to fill out the questionnaire. Yeah, I thought if I'm gonna facilitate them, I wanna fill this in. But I got, I got tricked because one of the questions was, if you could do anything or have anything, what would you do? And because I was confused at that time, I went, I, could, I want an answer. I want an answer, is there, is there you know, and I was talking to the universe, I didn't mm -hmm. know anything about God or Jesus. Um, and then when I was doing that, and, and in that seminar, I had an open vision. I'd never had an open vision like that. I had one before of the future, mm -hmm. but never like this. I, I was facilitating the class, but right there in the room, I saw God. Now, I don't know how I knew it was God. I just knew in my being it was God. It was like a silhouette and full of light. But what was more amazing was on his right hand side. Now, I knew nothing about the Bible, had nothing at all. But Jesus was, and I knew it was Jesus, he was on the right hand side of God. And he started to talk to me and he started telling me things about my life, about my future. And, and he was a real person and I could see him even though he was glowing. And then all of a sudden said, he goes, and I can feel it even now, he just, he just very strongly said, hold out your hands. And I held up my hands and these light beams, beams almost flew from him to me and through my hand, it was like electricity. And he said, no longer will you heal in your power or other power, you'll now heal in my power in the future. You know, when you just said that, his power elevated. Did you feel that? I did, I can feel it now. I, I'll tell you what, Alan. Alan gives Jesus a test, mm. a 12 month <laughs> test. Do you imagine that? He would teach new age, Alan would teach new age, and at the same time, follow the Bible. You won't believe what happened. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word, it means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. I don't get it, Alan. Here you're a new age leader. You just have a visitation, a vision of Jesus and God the Father. So what does someone like this do? <laughs> I know, I was very confused and um, I, I wasn't sure what to do. And yet the first thought that came to me was to go to a church. And this is why, still thinking from New Age beliefs, I thought if I go to a church, maybe I'm meant to be brought by the universe or the spirit at some time up to the pulpit and I can start to train Christians about how they're they, wrong and how to evolve them. I'm thinking that's probably what it right. was. Why else would a Jesus, Jesus visit me and I don't even know him? So you went to church. What happened? I, um, I'm sitting there waiting, thinking that, you know, the universe is going to do something and, um, and nothing happened except the pastor kept talking about the scriptures that Jesus, where he said, 
take my yoke and it will be easy and my burden will be light. Now, yoke is a Hindu term it, hmm. it's, and it's something I know very well because all those Hindu gods I had yoked to in my life and committed to them. And so I thought, wow, but this one's different. See, all the other ones that I had would make my life hard to clear karma. This one, I'm being told, as a Jesus being my Lord, my, you know, it's going to be easy to take the yoke. So I thought, why not? And so when the pastor said, who would like to invite Jesus into your heart, come down the front, I went down the front. I said the prayer, not knowing what I'm doing. And I say the prayer, but I had something spiritually happen in this area of my life. It was, and I didn't know what it was. I still feel it today. But I found out a couple of years later that I was actually being born again. But I didn't know that. So then I'm thinking, OK, I've had this spiritual experience. I've invited Jesus in with all the other lords still in there, the Hindu <laughs> lords. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. But I thought I'll test this one out. So I got a Bible and I thought for 12 months, still following my practices, doing everything that I needed to do in the new age, still actually running seminars. But this time I'm going to replace it with everything I can with Jesus. So anytime I would chant, I would chant Jesus internally, his name, not the demonic gods. Then what I would also do is I would pray. If I got sick, I would find out what does he say? Oh, he says, lay hands on the sick. So I'd lay hands on myself and I'd be miraculously on the spot healed. And, and then I got um, emotional grief was released from me almost miraculously. Everything that I did. So I thought for 12 months, I'll test him out. At the end of the 12 months with everything that happened to me, I realized this one thing. He was a greater Lord than the other ones. That's the revelation I had at that point. So now I want to tell everyone about this Jesus. And here I had dedicated my life to teaching people spirituality and how to change their lives for the better. Now I know the guy that can really do it and his name is Jesus. So I'm going to tell everyone. In that 12 months, the love of God, the love of Jesus that, was, that I had and the peace went beyond any practice I'd ever developed, any practice I'd ever learned in the new age. But here's the thing that was going on. He, all along, he's developing his growth in Jesus, seeing that Jesus is real. And he's teaching simultaneously <laughs> yes. the new age. It didn't last long. What happened? No. But people would get up and leave my seminars as soon as I'd mention the word Jesus. All sorts of strange well, things. Well, well, your leaders, your gurus, what did oh, they think my of My guru, I thought, well, I'll go and tell him. I was very excited to tell my guru I had found a Lord that was better than the other Lords. I actually was in front of him and he physically manifested into the point that uh, I saw a demonic face on him completely. It scared me. And then he started to yell at me and he said, get out. And by the time I had left and flown back to my hometown, he had excommunicated me from everything that I was involved in. I was involved in all sorts of organizations as a leader. You were, you were blessed that you had someone that mentored you mm. after you were thrown out. But were you really upset that you were thrown out? Oh, no. Oh, no. But the fact that I'd seen my guru manifest and, and other things, I realized I've been rescued. You literally met a, a man of God that prayed with yes. you and got you free of the demonic. What difference did you feel when you were free of that? Oh, it's very hard to describe, except that I felt I felt freedom, but real freedom, like freedom where nothing else matters. There's no fear. There's no worry. There's no anxiety anymore. There was no pain anymore. Totally free from all that. In fact, joy. The joy that came on my life was incredible. I, I've got to quickly share this. When I was testing Jesus, I was in an ashram doing my meditation. Mm -hmm. Joy hit me and I didn't know what it was. I got thrown out of the ashram because I was too noisy with joy. And it was then later when I realized that I had become a born again Christian that I realized that's what the joy of the Holy Spirit was. That's what was hitting me. Now, how long were you a believer until you wrote your brand new book? Approximately. Probably 25 years, 20 years. Why did you wait so long? You have information that the world literally needs to understand. I agree. I agree. And I've repented of taking so long. But what happened was that I didn't think anyone would care. Number one, I didn't think they'd care. Number two, there was so much darkness in my life. I didn't want to ever really revisit it. I, the I love understand. of Jesus was so strong. And then it wasn't until people started to say what you just said, saying, I could help people with your book. Get your book out. Get your book out. But I wanted to do it in God's timing. This is God's timing. I would have loved it 10 years ago, Sid, but this is the timing. 
This is where there's more false prophets and false teachers that I was one of them that are out there deceiving Christians. This is the time for people to get the knowledge. Tell me just one, one of the many things that have gotten invaded the church that was a calculated 30-year strategy. Well, I think the main one is yoga. Really? Yeah, we sat in a secret meeting trying to get yoga. 30 years ago was regarded as a crazy, weird thing. But we made a strategy that if we could wean it every year, we could get to the point of not only the Western world would think that yoga is good, but that we actually could get it into Christians' lives as well. And you know why? Because when, they, when you're in yoga, you're actually yoking with a Hindu god. That's so what unintentionally. Yes. But, but if they say, I'm just doing it for the exercise and I feel good, what would you say? You can't. You can't separate the spiritualism of something that is a spiritual exercise. I, I was a trained Hatha yoga master. I know what that's for. You can't just say, oh, no, 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 there's no... There's, so there's, there's no this agenda. Plan. There's exactly. an agenda beyond, and that, that was calculated. It was calculated and implemented. In your walk with God, what are the two most powerful motivators on the planet? For me right now, I think it's fear and it's love. Um, fear is from the enemy. We know that, that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. And, and yet we see the world right now, even Christians in fear of many different things, not just COVID, but even the circumstances in life and anxiety. I see more Christians with anxiety attacks, anxiety um, and depression and that type of thing. Yet at the same time, when I talk to them about the word of God, are they in that? Are they like my for me, I say, do you believe in Jesus or do you know Jesus? Is he your Lord and Savior or you just believe that he is? Someone stronger can take your belief away from you. But no one can take away your own experiential knowledge of the one that died for you and loved you to the point that he suffered for you and rose from the dead and wants to live inside of you and wants to use you beyond your wildest imagination. You don't know this, but you are so special. You've been chosen to be in this generation that is going to operate in the greatest glory of God. But I want to make sure you know him before we go any further. If you will say this prayer out loud and mean it to the best of your ability, God will do his part. Repeat after me. Dear God, I'm a sinner against you, and you alone have I sinned. And I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus washes me clean. This is the first day of the rest of my life. I'm not going to look back. I only have a wonderful future. My past is covered with your blood and you never remember my sins again, ever. And now that I'm clean, Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you my Savior and my Lord. Amen. Alan, I know something. I know that if you will pray for everyone that said that prayer with me or is, um, have said that in the past, or even someone that did say that prayer, I would pray, I want you to pray the fire of God come on everyone that's hungry for that more and anything else God shows you too. Firstly, I just want you to know that I have worked for the enemy as the devil is my Lord, and I've worked for God with Jesus as my Lord. Jesus is the answer to everything that's in your life. Now, I'm going to pray right now that the fire of God that Jesus laid on my hands will come to you right now 
And as he does come to you, he not only gives you a double portion, first of all, of the spirit of discernment of what spirits are out there so that you can test them. But more importantly, that you st I pray right now that you're going to have encounters with God. You're going to have encounters where you will know who the God is, that Jesus is your Lord and that you will have encounters of the fire. The fire of God will come upon you just like it did me in that vision. And I pray, Father, that there's a double portion right now <laughs> a double portion of people to know the joy of the Lord that will come upon them and a double portion of the spirit of revelation and the spirit of insight and knowledge come upon them to discern the future and what God has for them. Father, in the authority you've placed upon me, I bind any fear, any anxiety and any depression because they are spirit. So I bind them now in the name of Jesus. Whatever I bind here is bound in heaven. They will be released. People will be released from that spirit of fear right now in the name of Jesus. I take authority that you must leave them. You must leave their life and that the fruit of that deliverance shall come to pass. I pray that in the knowing of God, not just the belief of God, but in the knowing of Jesus, that right now he will give you a purpose for what you need to do from this point on. I believe there's several of you that right now are getting downloads of your godly purpose from Jesus. Some of you are even getting visitations right now of the Holy Spirit and his presence and even the physical form of Jesus into your room, giving you assignments, giving you a heart inside that is that is almost empowered by the fire of God to now be part of that remnant and move forward and bring the knowledge of Jesus to the rest of this world. Amen. I was a high ranking New Age leader who had invited several gods to live inside of me. Then I came face to face with the one God that I never even believed in. I've been on both sides of the fence, dark and light, evil and good. Call now and get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening, and his powerful three-part audio CD teaching series, which includes eight sessions dismantling the New Age counterfeit, plus his bonus audio CD expose, The Agenda of the One World Order. This package is exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience, yours. For a donation of $35, shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9728. Through this exclusive package, Alan retells his life journey of deep Deep entanglement with the New Age beliefs and practices. Understand how to avoid the dangers of the New Age. Hatha Yoga, Eastern Meditation, Reincarnation, Astral Travel, Astrology, Aura Cleansing, Tarot Cards, Reiki Healing, and so much more. Discover how the New Age religion considers women as inferior souls. Understand how Christians flirting with New Age practices are committing the sin of spiritual adultery. Learn the truth about the tragic and destructive results in the lives of those delving into the New Age and Eastern religious practices. Discover how to avoid being deceived by demons that pose as angels of light. The audio teaching series contains eight powerful messages. The audio series also includes Alan's anointed prayers for you, for repentance, deliverance and cleansing for an impartation of supernatural discernment to avoid false teachers and doctrines of demons to have a hedge of protection to guard your mind heart and spirit from deception you will also receive this bonus audio CD expose the agenda of the one world order is there such a thing as a one world order pushing for a one world government and a one world religion who's behind it what is their plan to accomplish this you will find the answers to these questions and more in this shocking audio CD expose as Alan reveals for the first time what was discussed in two secret meetings with world-renowned gurus and New Age leaders to deceptively establish the one world religion of the Antichrist. Don't miss out on getting Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening and his powerful three-part audio CD teaching series, which includes eight sessions dismantling the New Age counterfeit, plus his bonus audio CD expose, The Agenda of the One World Order. This package is exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience, yours. For a donation of $35, shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9728. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 2827. Please specify offer number 9728 or log on to sidroth.org. Call or write today.